Tell me about the first time Aaron took you fishing. Ah, oh, first time Aaron took me fishing? Yeah. I was hooked. <laughs> that was for Connor. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of collaboration in our lab, and I was super fortunate to uh, collaborate with Aaron Zalderdo last year, and he took me under his wing and taught me a lot about bass fishing, and uh, I, I can't not say I was hooked. <laughs> I have to say it. I was hooked. <laughs> yeah. The crux of this project is this idea that when tournaments occur, fish are displaced from their site of capture and released at a common release site, typically. And in Big Rito Lake, that happens to be the eastern end of the lake. That's where uh, there's a number of marinas and typically where the weigh-ins occur for these tournaments. So fish are caught in the main lake, brought there, and deposited and left in that area. And so what we're doing is comparing both smallmouth bass and largemouth bass that come from tournaments. And we're doing so across four seasons. So we went out before the season opened and tagged and released fish in the area uh, um, where the uh, weigh-ins occur. And then we also went uh, to three different tournaments, one early season, one mid-season, and one uh, late season. And what we've done is use that inform uh, we'll be tracking the fish from those tournaments and using that to, uh, to assess uh, whether or not the fish stay where they're released, whether they, they uh, head out to the main lake, and how long that takes to occur. What I like about this project is the number of partners involved. Uh, being a university, we can come to the table and say, hey, we've got you know, some student stipend that we can contribute. We've got boats, we've got, uh, we've got uh, vehicles to pull the boats and so on, and, and the, uh, the know-how to, to do these studies, and then pair that uh, with uh, some financial contributions that we've had from Big Rito Lake Association in particular. Uh, and those, uh, those funds have allowed us to go out and purchase transmitters uh, that, are, uh, that we're using to actually track the fish. Uh, but we've also partnered with the tournament organizers that have allowed us to come to their tournaments to uh, access fish and, uh, and, and track them. Uh, we obviously have uh, scientific collection permits from the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry and they're keen to, uh, to see what we found. So uh, this is pretty typical of the kind of work we do where it's, uh, it's not working with, uh, with just ourselves in the ivory tower nor is it working with just one group. It's working with a variety of groups that have different interests. You know, the Cottage Association might have very different interests interest than uh, the tournament anglers at the end of the day. Yeah, so after we've generated interest and organized our collaboration with the stakeholders, we actually have to implement and facilitate the collection of our data. One of the first things we do, and perhaps one of the most important things, is to set out receivers. Receivers are essentially a passive listening station that listen for the tags that we put in the fish. We deploy them at key choke points in the lake, and they pick up unique ID codes from our acoustic tags. When we download the data, we can determine which fish swam by the receiver and at what time. The fish surgery actually takes under three minutes. We make a really small incision behind the pelvic fin and we implant the JSAT acoustic tag in the body cavity of the fish. And then we suture up the incision with about two sutures and the fish is ready to be released immediately following the surgery. We release our fish in the same location as the tournament release site adjacent to the Rideau Ferry Bridge. We've also placed a receiver in the water and that enables us to look at the fish's starting point um, following the tournaments. Oh yeah. Yeah. 120 fish tagged. Being in academia, I feel a natural drive to do research and publish, but it should not end there. Hi, my name is Alice and I'm working with uh, Steve Cook's lab at Carleton University. And we're here today on Big Rito tagging fish. It's a real privilege to be able to bridge the gap between these stakeholders who obviously care just as much about these bass as myself and the research team I work with. Recently, I was really inspired by what a colleague told me. She said that science should not end at publication. And I was kind of blown away by that. I always assumed that science was finished when we published and our job was done, but really, it's only just begun. The people I'm working with, uh, the BRLA, the FLW tournament, the SFL tournament, and RJ and Birdie's Big Bass Megabucks tournament. Working with them, it's really become clear that they're all just chomping at the bit to understand more about these bass populations and learn about how they can help conserve these highly sought after species. I'd like to acknowledge the incredible generosity of the BRLA. With their support, we have been able to buy 120 JSAT tags uh, in order to monitor these fish. As well, the tournament organizers and the anglers who participated showed incredible generosity as well by giving us their fish they volunteered them to us in order to tag, and they also divulged their secret information of where they caught these fish. And without them, we couldn't do this study. 
we all have a common goal. I too want to go on Big Rito in 60 years with my grandkids and show them how to pop frogs on top water and catch those five pound bass. <laughs> mm -hmm.